Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at adding and subtracting whole numbers and decimals. We're going to solve some problems that deal with money because money has a decimal. It has a number in the tenths place and the hundredths place. So that's where the, the decimal comes in and it's 4.4a and 4.8c. So let's take a look at what we have here. So whenever we're adding and subtracting decimals, sometimes the numbers are not lined up for us ready to add or subtract. So we as fourth graders have to know how to do that. So step one is going to be to line up the decimals, whether you're adding, here we're lining them up here, or subtracting, lining them up here. Step two is to bring down the decimal. That's the first thing you wanna do, so you don't forget that, what's one of your strategies then you either add the numbers or subtract them the way you normally would. So those are our steps, our strategies for adding and subtracting decimals. Let's take a look at a problem. Well, not a problem, let's look, take a look at what decimals look like. For example, here we have 0 0.3 tenths plus 0 0.9 tenths. Now I could easily do mental math with this, but I do want to stack them up, line up the dots, and then add them up. But what does zero and three tenths look like? It would be uh, a tenths grid and three of the sections would be highlighted, just like this. And uh, zero and nine tenths would have nine of the tenths highlighted. So this is what it would look like if I was going to stack it up and then add it up. Here I could take one of the tenths, put it over on the other side, I would have a hole and then two tenths left over. So that would be my answer, one whole and um, two tenths. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Here I have one whole, this is one whole right here, and 78 hundredths. I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then 78 little sections highlighted out of the 100. But my job is to subtract 63 hundredths of them. So what I would do in this case is I would, um, here it goes. Oh, too far. Uh, yes, I would slash out 63 of the hundreds. So right here, I have already slashed out 60 of them. And I am now going to slash out 1, 2, 61, 62, 63 more. So I'm seeing that I'm saying here that I am left with still one whole and then 10 and 5 of the um, one hundredths left over. Okay, now let's take a look at this right here. Let's say that you have a word problem. You're trying to solve some problems and this one says Devin's lunch cost $3.65. She paid for her lunch with a $10 bill. How much change did Devin get back? Hmm, well if I'm thinking about this problem, it seems that Devin only bought one item, so that's okay, otherwise I would have to add all the items. And she doesn't have exactly $3.65 in her wallet. So she took out a $10 bill, and that's a lot of money. I wish I had a $10 bill in my wallet. Now, she's gonna have to get some money back. She has to get some change back. We always wanna make sure that when we're at the store, we get our correct change back. So I'm gonna do the problem solving model. I'm going to analyze it first. And I'm thinking that, uh, well, Devin has to buy something. She has to pay for it. It's not free. And she's going to have to get money back. That's the change that the mom is going to say, well, how, where's your change? How much change did you get, did you get back? So this tells me that I'm going to have to subtract this because her change is going to be less than $10. When I plan it out, I plan out my subtraction like this. I want to stack it up. I want my dots to line up right here. And I want to make sure that my $10 has a decimal and a zero, ooh, and a zero, okay? Kind of hard to write on this. So then I do my subtraction. When I do my subtraction, I see that I have zeros across the, the top. So I'm going to um, continue going down until I have enough. So I took my tens and my ones, and I'm gonna cross out the nines, and I'm ready to do the rest of the subtraction. You know, when I subtract, sometimes I wonder if I'm doing it correctly because there are so many steps. So to uh, evaluate and justify my problem, I'm going to add to check. So that's my E right here. 
And this is what I do. I just take the middle number plus the answer number, and I should get the top number. And yes, it does match $10 and $10. So this is one way that I could evaluate. Another way that I could evaluate and justify my answer is to say the answer in a complete sentence. Well, maybe at this point, I kind of forgot what the question was. So I want to go back and read it. And it says, how much change did Devin get back? Well, in a complete sentence, they would say Devin's change was $6.35. So this problem solving model, boys and girls, it's very easy. It doesn't take but a few little notes and uh, you want to check it and it really does work out for you. So today we were adding and subtracting with decimals and I hope that you do well on your assignment. Have a great day, Tigers. I'm looking for the stop button. Bye.